our final artist that we have up here. You know you're talking about someone impressive when the bio we're working from just like low-key leaves off the Pulitzer. <laughs> but it's still like actually nice. Anyway. Um, so Natasha Trethaway. Um, uh, I know part, you know, partly is an absolutely amazing poet, that might be what you know her for as well. Um, she also had an absolutely beautiful memoir that came out in 2020 um, that I was lucky enough to interview her for and do a profile on for Chicago Magazine. And I know that that's one of her two books that's available in the other room, so I really hope that you'll check that out. Um, so Natasha, Trush, yeah, sorry. Natasha Trethaway was born in Gulfport, Mississippi. Um, the daughter of poet professor and Canadian immigrant Eric Trethaway and social worker Gwendolyn Ann Turnbaugh. Turnbaugh? I'm, not, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, that is something that she writes about at great length in her memoir. It's um, absolutely worth the read. I hope that you're all poetry readers. I know that not everyone is, um, so I do recommend that memoir. If, you, if you've fallen away from poetry in your adult life, what I really recommend is that you buy maybe three books of poetry, this should be, you know, Natasha should be one of them, and just keep them in random places around your house, like keep one on the kitchen counter, keep one by the bathtub, so that you will be tempted to pick up that book and read one poem. And before you know it, you'll be reading more, and it's something that will seriously enrich your life. Um, anyway, um, so uh, she is, uh, with us in Chicago because Northwestern University had the uh, good sense of hiring her and bringing her here. We are so lucky that she is. Um, she is also a former U.S. Poet Laureate. Uh, she's the author of five collections of poetry. I think that's still true. Okay. Um, Monument, uh, which I believe is the book we have in the other room. Thrall, Native Guard, Bloxophilia, and Domestic Work. Um, the, uh, in addition to the memoir, she's also the author of a book of creative nonfiction called Beyond Katrina, A Meditation on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, which was published in 2010, and we're absolutely thrilled to have her with us. Thank you all for being here tonight. In support of Ragdale, I've yet to have my uh, time at Ragdale. It's coming up this fall, and I actually look forward to really being able to write again, to have that time and that space. I'm also really happy, like Jasmine, to be a Chicago writer. Uh, I'm from Mississippi, and a lot of my ancestors came here during the Great Migration. My mother spent her senior year of high school here. It seems to me that I was destined to come to this place all along. There's a lot of destiny in my life, it feels like, and I think Jonathan might appreciate this too. I was really happy to know that we share a birthday uh, because we also share with Melania Trump, and, and I am really <laughs> is happy about that. But, uh, Jonathan changes that for me. Um, but something else important about our birthday, which was last week, is also celebrated in the South as Confederate Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And I was born exactly 100 years to the day that that holiday was first celebrated in Mississippi, a holiday glorifying the Old South, the lost cause, and white supremacy. The attempt to destroy the Union in order to keep slavery. And this matters a lot to me because I write from two existential wounds, and one of them begins there. In his memorial to the great Irish poet, William Butler Yeats, W.H. Auden wrote, Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. <laughs> Likewise, my nation, my South, my Mississippi, with its history of racial violence and oppression, inflicted my first wound. When I was born there in 1966, miscegenation was still illegal there and in as many as 20 other states in the nation. Now, another reason I felt really at home when I came here, I moved here in 2017, and I had my first Halloween here in Evanston, and a child knocked on the door in a Civil War uniform. <laughs> 
a union. <laughs> I knew I was coming. <laughs> Those two wounds are the subject, really, of the two books that I have here. One of them is uh, a, a collection of poems called Monument. It is my first career retrospective, poems new and selected. I really think it's meant to be read along with my memoir, Memorial Drive, that charts the reason that I became a writer, why I write. Those, the culmination of those two existential wounds, the wounds of history that started my birth, and then my mother's murder when I was 19. She died on Memorial Drive in the shadow of the largest monument to the Confederacy, Stone Mountain. Now, I just want to read a poem to you because I'm much more at home reading poems than I am just talking. This is Miscegenation. In 1965, my parents broke two laws of Mississippi. They went to Ohio to marry, returned to Mississippi. They crossed the river into Cincinnati, a city whose name begins with a sound like sin, the sound of wrong, miss in Mississippi. A year later, they moved to Canada, followed a route the same as slaves, the train slicing the white glaze of winter, leaving Mississippi. Faulkner's Joe Christmas was born in winter, like Jesus, given his name for the day he was left at the orphanage, his race unknown in Mississippi. My father was reading War and Peace when he gave me my name. I was born near Easter, 1966, in Mississippi. When I turned 33, my father said, it's your Jesus year. You're the same age he was when he died. It was spring, the hills green in Mississippi. I know more than Joe Christmas did. Natasha is a Russian name, though I'm not. It means Christmas child, even in Mississippi. I write, as Seamus Heaney put it, to affect the redress of poetry, to contend with history, to reckon with our shared history as Americans and the willed forgetting and amnesia that still plagues us. I write because I cannot sit by and say nothing, because I believe in the power of story, of literature, to transform us. I write because the soul sings for justice, and the song is poetry. Amen. Amen.